And life never appears to yield the results that we envision for our lives. It's easy to feel inferior because we never seem to measure up to what society views as success. And if we're not careful, we will spend our lives trying to pursue some incredible man-made ideology of what perfection, of what value looks like. In reality, no human being is perfect. No one's life is perfect. We only serve a perfect God who has a perfect will for our lives. So when you find yourself basing your work on what anyone else thinks concerning you, it is time to get a fresh perspective, God's perspective, because what others think doesn't add to or take away from who God has purposed you to become. Realize to the wrong people, we will never be right. Further, everything we are and we are not is exactly what we need to be. And what we lack, we don't need because everything that you need, as it pertains to your future, as it pertains to your purpose, God will provide. Therefore, while you may not be good enough in the eyes of human beings, you are perfect for what God has created you to accomplish. Because God is your maker, he knows who and what you are today. Further, he knows who he shaped you to become on tomorrow. So your value is not based upon the limited perspective of humans because it has already been predetermined by an infinite, immeasurable, omniscient creator. Hi, my name is Alicia and today we will discuss how valuable you are in the eyes of God. I will also interpret three dreams. So if this sounds like something you're interested in, please keep watching. <laughs> In a dream, I saw an antique shop. In this antique shop were beautiful vases. They all had unique shapes that you would not normally see in a vase. For example, one was shaped like a star. I then saw a vase seated on a shelf alone. It was very pretty. It was gold and had a unique pattern of triangles on it. The vase had a price tag of $180 million. However, I didn't believe that it was worth that amount. So the very first aspect of this dream that I noticed was where it took place. It took place inside of an antique shop. Antique shops are known for selling items that are at least 100 years old and have historical significance. Often the items that are sold inside of antique shops have once been viewed as junk, sold for pennies or even given away by their original owners because they had no concept of their rarity or their worth. I've even heard stories of some visiting antique shops and purchasing items for next to nothing to ultimately find out that they're worth tens of thousands of dollars. And to the average person, the item may have originally appeared worthless, but for the person with the ability to see and discern rarity, it was valuable. The word antique also means something old or something ancient. It reminds me of one of the names of God, the Ancient of Days. In one commentary, I learned that the Ancient of Days is a way to describe God as a first-hand spectator of the past, the present, and the future. This is a very powerful concept because when people look at you, they base your worth, they base your value on where you've been, on your past, and where you presently are. They determine in their minds where you are going based on what was and what is. However, God, the Ancient of Days, saw you in the past. He sees you in your present, and he also sees your future all at the same time. Your worth in the eyes of God is not based on what you were or what you are, but what you will one day become. When God is telling you that you are great and you feel low, it's because he's sitting in your future and he knows where you will one day be. So when he tells you that you're great, you are great because he's looking at the greatness that others cannot yet see. Scripture says that before the foundations of this earth, God knew you. He knew you before this world knew you. He knew you before your mother knew you. He knew you before you knew you. Let's look at that verse in the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah, it reads, before I made you in your mother's womb, I chose, knew you. Before you were born, came out of the womb, I set you apart for a special work, consecrated you. I appointed you as a prophet to the nation. Then I said, but Lord, I don't know how to speak. I am only a boy, a child, a youth. The word new in that verse is yada. It means to ascertain by seeing, observing, caring, recognizing, and discerning. Jeremiah was just minding his own business that day when God comes and calls him a prophet, but he didn't feel like a prophet because in his past he wasn't a prophet but God saw what he was in his future and God could say that because he was there when no one else was there before he was formed in his mother's womb he ascertained who Jeremiah was is and would one day be he knew and recognized Jeremiah before he was birthed into this earth surrounded by individuals who could not discern his value you'll notice that immediately after God calls Jeremiah a prophet his mouthpiece the very first thing Jeremiah says is that he can't use his mouth that he can't speak because 
because he's only a child, a youth, a boy. You will always know when God is calling you because he will call you into an area that you don't feel worthy enough to handle. He'll call you into a place that you feel is impossible for you because Jeremiah was called to speak because that's what prophets do, but he doesn't feel like he can speak. Moses was called to speak because that's what prophets do, but he didn't feel like he was eloquent enough. He didn't feel as though he could articulate. David was called to be high and lifted up as a king, but everyone looked down on him. He was chosen last by humans, but first by God. Jesus was called to be the savior of this world. Those closest to him, those around him, reduced him to his present occupation, a carpenter. Because Jesus had never been the savior of the earth in his past, humans attempted to limit and dictate his future. People will always place limits on what they don't understand. They will always devalue what they can't discern. But you never have to worry about the thoughts they think towards you because they can't change the thoughts that God thought towards you. Right after Jeremiah says he can't speak, God tells Jeremiah, don't worry about it because I'm going to put my words inside of your mouth. Therefore, all God is looking for is someone willing to believe what he said about them. All he needs for you to do is come into agreement with what he has been speaking to you about you, whether you feel worthy of the call or not. In this dream, the vases were shaped uniquely. For example, I saw one shaped like a star and I saw another tall gold vase seated on a shelf alone. It had been set apart and it had triangles on it. It also had a price tag of $180 million. This vase was cute, but in my eyes, it was not worth $180, let alone $180 million because I couldn't discern its worth. However, my perspective of the cost, the worth, the value of the vase didn't matter. One of the things that made this vase very special was this unique pattern of triangles. In a dream, a triangle could represent the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So therefore, this vase could represent an individual, a vessel of God who was filled by the Spirit of God. However, we know that mathematically, the sum of the interior angle of a triangle is always 180 degrees. And we use the term 180 in English to describe a sudden change from one particular opinion, a decision or a plan to an opposite one. It reminds me of that one verse that says, you are only human and human beings have no right to question God. Who are you, a mere human being, to talk back to God? An object, a thing molded, should not ask the person who made it, why did you make me like this? The potter can make anything he wants to make. Doesn't the potter have authority over the clay? He can use the same lump of clay to make one thing vessel a pot for special honorable use and another thing for daily common dishonorable use. When God formed you, he had a vision in mind for your shape and he formed you in such a way to have the capacity to hold what he intends to release through you. Only he has the right to change, to make a decision, to make plans as it pertains to your life because at any moment, despite what anyone else believes about you, God will, can, and do a complete 180 and an about turn in your life. He doesn't consult with human beings concerning your worth because he already he knows your sum total. He already knows your value. A triangle was always meant to be a triangle, not a square, not a circle, and for a specific reason. Because the measurement of a triangle makes it the strongest two-dimensional shape. Its specific measurement is so strong and powerful, it is used as the blueprint to construct bridges and buildings. Well, Psalm 139 verse 3 says, God, you know, measure where I go, my path, and where I lie down, my lying down. You know, are familiar with everything I do, all my path. You may created my whole being in what you formed, knitted me in my mother's body, belly, womb. This tells me that we don't need to measure up to the expectations of others. All you have to do is be the shape that God molded you into before you were formed in your mother's womb. Because everything that you experience in this life is building you, is shaping you, making you who you need to be. Your design is unique. The pattern of your life, where you were born, your education, your lack of education, your speech pattern, your language, your appearance, everything thing you are is exactly what you need to be to be who God called you to be. In geometry, there is something called an angular defect. An angular defect is a deficiency in a shape when it doesn't measure up perfectly to 360 degrees or 180 degrees. This results in an irregular shape, like the vases that I saw in the dream. Because remember in the dream, I saw vases that were shaped irregularly in ways that vases are not normally shaped. The thing about it is that they were still vessels. They could still be filled. And they could hold exactly what they were designed to 
to hold. Jeremiah saw his age, his speech as a defect. God saw otherwise. He saw it as an opportunity to fill Jeremiah's mouth. God will often allow you to have what you feel is a deficit so that he can be your surplus, so that he can add his super to your natural and cause you to soar in his power. So what you see as a defect, what you see in yourself as a deficit, God sees as an opportunity to show forth his glory and his power and his might through you in ways that you once believed was beyond your capacity. Because of my personality type, I can appear to others to be extroverted, but inside I cringe at the thought of public speaking and cameras because I am 93 to 97 percent introverted. But as I am faithful to step out beyond myself to do what God tells me to do, God fills me with the words to say. But even though I'm able to do what he tells me to do, I still know inside that I do not have it all together, that there is a deficit, a defect that only God can feel as I trust him. And that's exactly where God needs you to be. Because that's why that scripture says that God doesn't really use the wise. He doesn't use the noble. He doesn't use the intellectual, those who have it all together. Because if you feel you already know everything, you are already full of yourself. There is no room for his spirit to fill you and then flow out to others. In this dream, I felt that that vase was not worth the $180 million price tag on it. And it represents the limited mindsets of human beings because we tend to value things based on what we see outwardly. But God is looking at the heart. He is looking at what he placed on the inside of you. God, the ancient of days, will always know your worth because he already ascertained by seeing your value. Therefore, as long as you measure up to what God calls you to measure up to, you don't have to worry about your defects or your deficiencies because God will use them as an opportunity to add to your life and to the lives of others. In a dream, I saw a woman going back to a place where she was once employed. It was a retail store called Simply Fashions. When she went inside of the store, she was immediately offered her old position back. It felt comfortable. Therefore, it felt like a good idea because it felt as though she never left. She fit right in. In the next scene of this dream, I saw her lying down, contemplating whether she should go back to her old position or not. Because she had been waiting on God to move in her life, and he had not. She was ready for a change, but he was not moving quickly enough. As she was lying down, she looked at the clock, and it was 3.45 p.m. She was supposed to report to work at 5 p.m. And even though she wasn't late, she felt late. She was rushing. and felt like she needed to hurry and make a decision. She decides to go to the job and turn it down, but it was encountered by a co-worker named Emily who offered her $23 more if she decided to stay. Therefore, she would be making more than double if she chose to stay. However, realizing that the job wasn't for her, she left it behind. In another scene, I saw her younger sister dressed and looking perfect for the position. Her sister was walking out of the door ready for her new position. So this dream does not begin very well because we noticed that the woman was going back to a place where she once was. And most of the time, if you're going back in a dream, it represents settling, stepping out of position, looking back to those things that God has called you away from. The name of this store is also interesting. It is a retail store that I am familiar with called Simply Fashions because I worked there when I was in college. Simply Fashions was a store that sold discount clothing. And there's nothing wrong with discount clothing, but we have to remember that dreams are symbolic. Therefore, looking at the word discounted, it means to reduce a price. It is synonymous with the words demoted, lowered, cheapened, undervalued. It is the antonym of the word elevation. So next, we're going to look at the words simply and fashions. The word simply means something that is plain, common, ordinary, artless. And of course, the word fashion can mean dress items or clothing, but it also means to form, to shape, or to make. It can mean a pattern. And further, clothing in a dream represents a mantle, what you're covered with, what God is calling you to become, the essence of who you are in God. So therefore, this part of the dream would represent someone who doesn't believe that they're called to be much. They don't believe that they're worth much. Someone who has been discounted, demoted, lowered, cheapened for most of their life. This person represents represents one with the predisposition for low self-esteem. They feel ordinary or common, like God can't do anything great in their life. This belief, however, is contradictory to what God says about us in his word. Psalm 139 verse 16 says, My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed, and in your book they all were written, the days fashioned for me, when as yet there were none of them. How precious are your thoughts to me, O God, how great is the sum of them. The word made in this verse is asa. It means to make, to shape, to fashion. It also means to dress. This verse says that we were skillfully made in the lowest parts of the earth. Even at your lowest, when you feel like you are nothing, God sees the potential on the inside of you. He sees your worth. He sees your value. There's one verse that says that you are God's masterpiece, his work of art. Even though life may sometimes beat us down, cause us to have low self-worth, this does not change what God has 
already mapped out, planned, and fashioned for our lives. This verse also says how great is the sum of the thoughts of God towards us. The word sum in that verse is synonymous with the word worth. Therefore, your worth in God, who he is calling you to be, is worth more than you can ever imagine. However, in this dream, we see a woman who is desperate for a change outwardly, but she first needs to be changed inwardly. Because when she is changed inwardly, what God placed on the inside of her could flow freely. And once what was inside of her could flow freely, her outside reality would dramatically shift. In this dream, her looking back was counterproductive because she is trying to go back to a place. She is trying to go back to something that God is saying is beneath her. And I know how it feels when you're waiting on God and your hands feel empty. It's convenient to look back and go back to what you can accomplish in your own strength so that you will then have proof, evidence that your life is moving forward and not regressing. Because remember in this dream, she felt comfortable. She felt like she never left. She fit right in. Reminds me of Lot's wife. Her heart was still looking back to a place God wanted to deliver her from. Because when God has called you forward and you choose to look back to what once was, you are saying to God that you don't trust him for more. You are willing to settle for less than. Anything that you can accomplish in your own strength without God is not worth having. We also see another problem in this dream. The woman is lying down contemplating whether or not she should go back to this position. She looks at the clock and it says 345. When you see numbers in dreams, it is always important to consult God about the meaning in his word. Because in studying, I found that the Strong's number 345 is an akimahi. It means to recline, to lean, to lie down, to sit down. Also, we know that Proverbs 3, 4 through 5 says that we will find favor in the sight of God and men. Verse 5 says to trust in God with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding. And if we go further in verse 6, it says, acknowledge God in all of your ways and he will direct your path. Therefore, as this woman is lying down, she was in the right place because she was resting in God's ability. Even though financially or emotionally, her decision not to accept the position wouldn't make sense. Even though it will feel good for her to move ahead in her own strength and produce something tangible. As she remained where she was, she was displaying her ability to trust in God and to lean not to her own understanding. She was acknowledging God and her choices and her decisions, allowing him to direct her path. In this dream, the woman is feeling rushed make a decision because she is to report to the job at 5 p.m. Know that in the word of God, the number five is the number of grace. However, we also know that God never rushes us, the enemy does. If you are ever in a position where you're feeling rushed, where you need to make a decision to settle right now and you feel discomfort, that is not of God. Because where there is no peace, God is not present. Therefore, in this dream, the enemy is masking this opportunity as an opportunity from God because we know that the word says that he comes in like an angel of light, masquerading. The position seemed to be full of grace, full of promise, full of promotion, but it did not have peace attached to it. After she declines to offer in this dream, someone named Emily approaches her, offering her more money. Remember that names can have positive or negative connotations depending on the context of your dream. For example, the name Emily can mean striving or rival. If you are striving toward God in a dream, it can have positive connotations. It can show determination, effort, and even excellence. However, the word striving can also mean to struggle or to fight against something or someone. Given the context of this dream, this striving would represent striving against God's will for her life. And Emily will simply represent a rival to the woman's elevation. Emily offers her $23 an hour, which in this dream appeared to be a large amount of money. So let's look at the number 23. In the book of Numbers chapter 23 in the Bible, we read of a non-Israelite prophet named Balaam. He is encountered by a man named Balak. Balak requests that Balaam pronounce and speak a curse over Israel. However, along this path, God opens the eyes of Balaam and tells him to bless, not curse Israel. Despite the pressures from Balak, Balaam refuses to speak words contrary to the words God wanted him to speak over Israel. It would have been easy for Balaam to make up a curse to speak over Israel. He would have possibly received great wealth from Balak. Instead, he remains faithful to God, saying, God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Has he said and he will not do it? Or has he spoken and he will not make it good and fulfill it? Behold, I have received his command to bless bless Israel. He has blessed and I cannot reverse it. Instead of choosing immediate wealth, what was convenient, what he could hold in his hand, Balaam decided to speak a blessing rather than the curse. In essence, he declines the offer because you can't curse what God has already blessed. You cannot reverse what God has already spoken and you can never tear down what he intends to build up. In this dream, the woman ultimately realized that where she was is where she needed to be and she refuses the $23. She declines the offer. As a result, she sees her sister dressed and ready
ready to walk out of a door for the very job that she turned down. That means that this was not a bad position. It was a good position. It was just not God's will for this particular woman's life. It was his will for someone else. When we move out of place into a position that God has not ordained, we're simultaneously moving someone else out of their position. Because in this dream, God will be using this job, this place that this woman turned down to equip her younger sister who represents a babe in Christ for what was next in her life. Therefore, remain where you are. Don't be rushed. Don't feel like you have to settle. Rather, contrary to what you may believe about yourself, you are beautifully and wonderfully made. God did not dress you to be discounted. According to scripture, he ordained you to wear royal robes. In a dream, I saw a woman in this deep void. It was a pit in the earth, but inside of her was a glow that expanded outside of the pit. It illuminated a castle that was sitting inside of her. This void that I saw in this dream reminded me of the void that we read about in the book of Genesis. In verse 1, it says that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the universe. And then verse 2 says that the earth was without form and it was void. But then God spoke and said, let there be light and there was light. The word void in that verse is both. It means empty, ruined, indistinguishable. In essence, in verse 2, the earth, the world's existence, it didn't look like much. It wasn't formed. It wasn't made. It was in ruins. It was indistinguishable. Some scholars believe that between verse 1 when the earth was made and created and verse 2 where it says the earth was void and unformed that there is a period called gap creationism. They believe that in between those two verses is a period of restoration that needed to happen because that is the time where Satan failed and his rebellion caused destruction and chaos in the earth thereby causing a need for it to be restored. I believe that you cannot destroy what God has created. You can't overthrow what he has ordained, what he has mapped out. And when God speaks things happen, things shift, things move. And like we discussed last week when he spoke, light responds. So in this dream, this woman was in a dark place. A place where chaos and things may have come and tried to destroy everything as it pertains to her life. As a result, her life may have not looked like much. It looked worthless. She was in a pit of despair. Wondering when and if God could ever make something out of her life. Then in this dream, inside of her, I see this light illuminating outside of the pit. And inside of her, I saw what always was. A castle. So why was there a castle inside of her? Not a regular mansion, a house, or an apartment complex. A castle is, is something that is ancient, something old, something that's royal. It is not ordinary. It is not common. It reminds me of that verse that says that we are a chosen, set apart, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own special position, so that we can declare the praise of him who called us out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Like the woman in his dream, sometimes we have no concept, no idea of what God has placed inside of us, especially when all we can see around us is this void, this darkness, this chaos. But what you experience cannot alter the thoughts that God already thought toward you. Like Joseph, God will allow us to go into pits, but it is only to pull out the palace, the castle, so the light inside of us will illuminate right in this world around us. Therefore, don't allow dark experiences to reduce you. Don't allow people to cause you to believe that you're not worthy. Rest assured that God knows your value. He knows and sees your worth because he is the one that placed it in you before you were ever shaped in your mother's womb. Father, thank you for everything you're allowing today. Thank you for the dark days, for their amazing us into what we need to become. Even in the darkness, you are pulling greatness from us. Thank you for shaping and equipping us with everything we need to step into what you desire. And when the enemy comes in like a flood, attempting to rush us out of your will and off your path, please give us a spiritual foresight to discern what is of you and what is not. Give us a strength to wait on what you ordain rather than what we can hold immediately in our hands. And when we feel worthless, remind us of our worth in you. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Thank you for being here today. Have a wonderful rest of your day and a blessed week. And as always, thank you for watching.